Hi everyone, so today I want to share with you these new items from LDRS Creative's um, new spring launch and it is the Cosmos items and then the stencil background, the basket weave stencil, which is awesome. I don't know if I mentioned in the unboxing, which I'm sure I did whenever I showed you all the new items. It's a six inch square stencil and slightly smaller, you know, with the edge accounted for, right? So what you can... Um, actually stencil the areas just under six inches so uh, with this uh, basket we stencil it makes something that looks like this and when I did the unboxing of the collection and showing you all the different items I had mentioned that these to me just seem like they need to go together so we're gonna work with them today so we have that guy and then um, separately they have the photopolymer stamp set of the Cosmos gorgeous I mean just beautiful and what I love about this it's a nice size I already kind of measured those in the um, unboxing video and we have the sentiments you know just wanted to send you happy thoughts sending you a great big hug have a sweet day but the die set that's separate here uh, will cut out both uh, bouquets or um, floral like bursts but it also has uh, the dies for the words which is something I love. I absolutely love that because it just it's so easy to work with them when you have the exact die to, to go along. And then, made even easier, you have the stencils. Now the stencils are standalone. Honestly, if you just want to stencil it and um, it'll just look like like a watercolor effect. Oh, maybe even use water-based things and then kind of pull out some of the color. That'd be really lovely, right? Um, but you can get the definition with the stamp. Or, you know, you get the stamp, color it with markers or with alcoholic markers separately some other way. I love having the stencils. I mean, they just make the work light and easy and beautiful. And so I'm ready to go. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, just grab some paper. Um, a lot of times I use alcohol ink marker paper because that's just what I have on hand, but just a nice heavyweight paper I would recommend. Um, something smooth. That's generally why I still use marker paper. Ooh, maybe Bristol smooth, something like that. Just whatever it is that you like, obviously, to use. So I'm going to grab some white paper. I am going to do both bouquets because what happens is they're both on here. So as you can see, if you just want like the top one, then just, you know, pay attention to these top areas and then you'll have the top guy. And let's say you want just the bottom one, just do the bottom ones. I'm going to do them both. And um, that way we'll have two different things. I mean, you can even make two different cards or you can have on the one card, you know, more flowers, however it is that you want to play that up. So let me grab some inks um, with the colors. Of course, you can do different colors like they have here, like they had like a teal and like a... Uh, pinkish. Um, you probably will want to mask some of the areas if you're doing that because as you can see like this the first stencil for like the flowers you have this area. Then the second one um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, let me back up. <laughs> so, uh, stencil 1A, I guess I don't know why I skipped to 2B, being the first one. You have the little blue flowers, right? And then 1B, you have the accents for that blue part, if you're using the blue. You know, that's kind of what I'm just uh, showing you, what they're showing here. Um, and then the next one is going to be that middle part. And then the, um, the second kind of layer for that middle part. And then in 3A, you have some of the greenery but you also have some accents to, you know, the teal color, like a little darker even, or whatever it is. So let's say, you know, you want to separate those colors out. You're going to have to do some masking. Um, so just uh, putting that out there in case you decide to do some different colors of flowers for like the smaller flowers or these guys. And then we have uh, the finish off of the green is the stencil 3B. So. I'm going to grab, I guess, two different colors of green because it looks like that's what they're doing here. And then whatever colors I want to use for my flowers and uh, some white paper. Just cut down to the size of this. Why not? So I believe these are like four by six. Yeah, it's four by six, just like I mentioned. So let me get some four by six paper and we'll start with those guys. Then we'll do our background and all that kind of stuff. So I'll be right back. So I'm going to put some of these things to the side. And I have some purples, um, La Lavender and Miss Periwinkle there. I have this uh, four leaf and green and a kind of a lighter lime color called Lime Burst. And then I have some teal kind of colors. And ooh, I'm going to have to check on that again because I don't remember which one of these is lighter or darker. So we will test that out in just a minute. Um, and then I'll be back with that. I think I'm going to use some figure doppers. But again, if you want to mask things off so you can use different colors and not have to be super careful, I would definitely recommend that. But I'm just going to go for it. So this is 1A. And I did cut my paper a little bit wider than the four inches, just so that I had, do have something to tape down with. And I am just going to eyeball them. <laughs> um, it's, you know, whatever you want. These stencils themselves have like little markings, little etchings, so you can line up the next, you know, level and the next level uh, the way they should be. So you can definitely do that. 
use those marks to help you out and I'll just put down two of these guys and again let me test this out real quick on a scrap piece of paper Let's see which one's darker because I'll start with the lighter one is what I'm looking for I think this one's the lighter one okay so I'm gonna start off with this guy and just you know a little color Okay. I'm doing it really lightly just because these two colors are very similar so I just want to make sure that um, there's more differentiation just again I'm using a light hand instead of possibly two colors that very much blend in together okay so there's those guys and I'm doing the inking first today just to do something different because generally, generally what I usually do is I usually like to wash these off pretty quickly too because sometimes hybrid inks will want to stick to plastic surfaces as far as like the color, um, the discoloration you might get. So again you have these little outline pieces that will help you line up. Um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah I'm going to do the stamping afterwards. Um, I usually do that at the beginning or I go ahead and do it but I include a little um, heat embossing you know which I love but for right now I'm just going to stamp afterwards see how that goes for us okay oh my goodness did I read <laughs> I hope I used the right one already let's try that again yes okay now this is the darker kind of teal color I'm really going to go in on that one. And most of these pieces are pretty big and thick so you can just kind of go in there. I'm not having to pounce. Sometimes I pounce, pounce, pounce depending on how detailed the stencil is. If it has like little areas that you think you might pick up, I'd rather pounce like this than the circular motion I'm doing right now. Just trying to get in every spot there, make sure. Okay, and I'll probably go ahead and rinse these just because we're kind of in a good spot to do that. And the next flowers I'm going to do are purple. And we'll go from there. So let's see what we have here. Pretty, pretty. You can see it's a little, um, what's that word? Abstract right now. But I'll be right back. I'm going to wash these off and then we'll do our next series of flowers. So next one is 2B. So we did 1A, 1B. Right there, 2A, 2B, and then 3A and 3B. Okay, so this one is 2B, and this one I will pay attention to the etchings because they are definitely different from the flowers that we just did. So I will look at those as well as I can with the camera. You know, my project being up here for the camera, a little harder for me to see. That looks great. Maybe this one a little bit more up like this or so. Take these guys down and then we'll start with the lavender and then move up to the darker purple and I haven't chosen her chosen yeah I guess a third color for like the darker darker blue or the purple that I'm thinking if I use the same color we might do that like a like a bluish color or something I think it'll work for both of these guys so okay we're starting with the lavender kind of color and there is kind of an area here that's a little more delicate so I'm just gonna be careful when I go around in there And uh, yeah, <laughs> so I hope I'm just flowers on this one. And very pretty. Okay, same thing down here. Just gonna smooth in this lavender all in this area here. Oh my gosh, you guys, you know what? I'm sorry, I take it back. I should have used 2A, I used 2B, which is fine. It'll just be darker when I come in the second time. Sorry, I was just gonna start over. I thought, you know what? It's okay, I can just show you guys what I did there. 2A. My goodness. I don't know why I thought I had A in my hand. It was B. Let's switch that back out. So again, the numbers are right here. Sorry about that, guys. So let's go with 2A. And again, we're still paying attention to where we, you know, the little uh, lines there. And actually having done the other one helps me still, you know, place it 
correctly. There we go. And I'm still going to go in with the um, lighter color because that's what I want right now, the lighter lavender. Sorry about that, guys. And then I'll come back. So silly. But again, I just want to show you what I did so you wouldn't have any confusion. And these things happen. There we go. All that's going to happen is that area is going to be especially darker, right? The 2B area, which is fine. Even right now when I do it, look, you can see where it's lighter because we went over the other area before. Okay. All right. Now let's go ahead and bring back 2B. And I'll use a darker purple, although there's already shading just from having done what I did. Okay. I guess it's another way. If you don't have too many colors, just go over it again with the next one, right? Um, but there we go. And let's use the darker purple. Ms. Periwinkle's on her way. Oh, yeah. So, same thing as you saw me do it before. Oh, and again, I want to be careful with that little area there. See this piece? Hopefully, you can see it better now that I have color down. It's just uh, a little more delicate, so you just want to be careful when you get there. And then again, this area, and I'll be right back. Okay, so that's our dark purple with 2B. Now this next one, I will make sure to grab 3A and look at that. Alrighty. I'm going to rinse these out because, again, we just used those guys, but I will show you 3A has some leaves. It has some accent colors to both flowers, too. So let's go ahead and put that down while I'm here. I'm going to go rinse those other guys off. Again, we have our little etching marks. That will help us put that down. That looks pretty good. Okay. Let me go rinse this other guys off. And then, like I said, I'll probably just bring in like, like a blue color. Why not? For both flowers. And then, oh, we don't want to cover that area. And then our leaves, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use finger daubers. So I, I'm actually not going to do any masking. Just going to make it easy. And I'll be right back. Okay, so we have finger daubers. Um, so light green. So I'm going to bring this guy in light green first. And then the accent darker green comes in on the next um, stencil. So maybe I'll bring in a little bit closer just so you can kind of see the different areas. So as you can see, leaf, 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 you know, out here. So I'm just going to take my light green. And just come in here and I'm going to do this again with finger daubers so that I stay out of this area. So just a little color. But, you know, you can take your tape, your washi or whatever it is, post it, and just cover those areas so you don't get in here. Oh! <laughs> I dabbed this, I don't know why, into my uh, tape dispenser. Uh, ink is up here. All right. And another little one over here. And then I'll do the same thing down here, just it's here, here, well, I'll show you just so that we're all on the same page. It's here, just a little one here, and this last one over here, okay? So that's the green. And then, like I said, I'm just going to do it all with like a deep blue, and this is a really deep blue, so to be honest, we can probably use finger daubers and just do the purple purple also, but I thought, why not? We'll see how this looks. So I have some blue here. And I'm just going to go in here, and the only thing I'm trying to avoid is, are the leaves, should I say, are the leaves. In there, oh, that looks so pretty. Okay, and then I'm bringing that blue in here, guys. And the reason I chose blue is because um, of the teal, and then purple, you know, sometimes the royal blue. They just kind of go together, why not? So I'm just bringing that in here. And wherever you see those areas that are open in here, looking good. And then just in here. And I'll do the same down here. So just this area and this area. You know, on the flowers, basically. I'll be right back. And that is the only, what I would say, shared stencil, where it's like the leaves and the flowers on the same. The next one is just to finish up your leaves. So you can go back to a bigger brush or just daubing. I'm just going to use the dauber anyway, I think. Uh, yeah. So let's go ahead and remove this. See what this looks like. Oh, I love the deep colors. Look at that. 
Oh, that's so pretty. Okay, so we're going to wash this off in just a second. And then this is our last one, which is 3B. And it's all leaves, basically. So uh, I'm just going to pop this in here. And, you know, by this time you have so much color and things, you can definitely just follow the edges of those, or you can pay attention to the little registration marks, however it is that you like. But I'm just going something like that. And <laughs> taping that completely differently here. And since I already have my dauber, my dark green, I'm going to bring in this darker green. This one's very bright. That's just what I'm going for, but you know. Actually, it looks a little deeper once you actually start working with it. So this one, again, you can just go over the whole thing because it's all leaf. <laughs> so just like in here and there and back over here. Okay, and same thing down here. I'll just use the dauber in the open areas and I'll be right back. You guys. <laughs> Let's see our handiwork. And this way you also kind of see what that looks like without the uh, image, right? The stamped image. So I think that's a, a good thing to check out and that helps you, you know, make your decisions. But look at this. Very abstract. I mean, up close it's like, but out here you can see all that just so pretty. Uh, okay, so let me wash these off and then we'll do the stamping. I'll be right back. Okay, so I have this on a stamping platform. Um, we'll do one and then the other. I suppose you can do them both at the same time. And I mean, we have, you can even stamp your sentiment too. You know what, maybe we'll do that. We'll stamp a few of them. Oh, so I've got a curiosity. I want to see, look at that. <laughs> That's crazy, but I am going to take it off, but it looks like if you wanted to really stick it down, just maybe put some adhesive, some double-sided adhesive on this, you can probably get it stamped all at once, but that's okay. So I'm going to place this on here, and I'm going to bring this up to my face to make sure I'm like exactly where I want it to be, guys, and I'll be right back. People ask me, how do you really know where you want to stamp? And again, you can stamp first, because then you know exactly where you're lining up your stencil. So stamps are kind of beveled in. I don't know if you can see that, the way it's kind of like beveled right at an angle so this little area I just make sure I'm not really looking at the outer portion of the stamp I'm looking at the very fine detail on the inner portion of the stamp and that's how I line it up and, you know hopefully I did a good job here but um that's how I do it and right now I mean it moved a little bit right because of the stickiness we will see so um it is a very thick line on this one is what I noticed also so again, we can definitely stamp this off if you know you think you need to do that. And what I mean by that is like stamp it on a practice piece of paper first, just to see kind of where you're at as far as the stamp. Um, Say, so where is my tool? Ooh, okay. That is really nice. A little bit dry, so I'm gonna do it again. I'm really going to get this a lot juicier. And sorry about that. Gorgeous. Look at that. And then I'll do the same thing for the bottom one. Just line it up the best I can and then get those black lines on this one. Right? Same thing. Just line it up. And I'll be back. And that one I got, you know, all the detail in one um, pass just because I really juiced up the uh, inking on the uh, stamp and there we go so just one time and I'm gonna go ahead and stamp these guys on here too because the wording for these or the dies should I say are right on the edges so I know wherever I have room to put it I'm pretty much gonna be able to cut it out there too so I'm just gonna stamp all of them why not and I'll be right back I'll probably put this one over here my goodness you guys look how delicate these are like the thinnest line so pretty honestly like <laughs> I can't even explain like just how thin and nice and elegant basically I mean look at that so okay uh, let me clean up and I'll be right back and we'll do our die cutting in just a moment um, but basically I'm just gonna run these through actually we'll just talk about it now why not? <laughs> so I'm just gonna take the dies and literally cut everything out so Again, very easy to see through these guys. Um, just put them on the edge there. And, you know, a little tape so they don't move. Run it through. Same thing with our words. I have this upside down, so I'm just trying to see if I have this the right way. Uh, yeah, right there. Again, tape it down on all of them. So when I come back, I'll have those guys cut out. 
so pretty. I put this on top of here before I stick down my card to the little carrier there, and I will definitely pick up that die that just dropped. And so we have our stencils. So I did cut down my paper to the size I want, but really you don't have to do that. Um, you might want to just leave it a little bit larger and then cut it down because it just gives a different edge to the stencil look. So right now I'll have some definite edges, right? Um, so we're going to use these guys. And I'm going to use a very light blue because I was thinking that would be fun to make it look like a whitewash, but maybe like a worn wood. I don't know. I'm just going to go with light blue and I'm going to do it for both the up and down and then the sideways one. As you can see, that's what makes our basket weave. And... Uh, let's see, I'm just going to eyeball this to see what looks more centered is what's at the top, kind of leaving that same amount at the bottom and then left and right. I'm going to get a little tape on here, there and over here. And I'm just going to take this uh, swimming hole, it's pretty light blue. I'm just going to come in here and do this. Kind of even application. Again, just kind of having fun with that. I'm not looking for perfection here. I'm just going to lay down some colors, all I'm looking for. All right, make sure we're all on there. Okay. And then in the opposite direction, you know, I'm just going to pick up space. So for this one again. Just pay attention. You're going to cover up what you just did, basically. So since I kind of did whatever I wanted with the last line and alignment, we're just going to put this right on top. And I'm just eyeballing kind of where we're at. Like about there. I'm seeing this piece down here that's a little more covered. Yeah, in here. Okay. And again, I am taping out here. And same thing. Just come in. <laughs> And just fill in the whole stencil, okay? So I'll just go from top to bottom, and, and I'll this time, You know, I did the same thing, just circular motion like I did before. And it just lays down differently. I guess just because the way you're brushing up and down and the orientation, I don't know. But let's check this out. Oh my goodness. Honestly, you're not really overlapping. This is crazy. Because you're not overlapping one color to the other, so you think that maybe it'll get darker to make the basket weave look, to make it look 3D. But it really isn't. They aren't touching at all. But it's just, all I did was a circular motion. You guys saw me. The same with the first one, the same with the second one. And it just gives it a different look. It's just the way that... You know, that motion, I don't even, wow. <laughs> you guys, what do you think? Oh my gosh, that is amazing. Okay, I'm going to go rinse those off and then um, we'll get our card put together. So you can cut them all out at the same time. I'm not sure why I chose to do this, these few and then these guys and now I'm going to do these. What? But they all the dies fit on the same thing at the same time. You can run it all through together, which is really great. Um, okay, look at that. Oh my gosh, I'll be right back. We have our pieces. Let's go ahead and glue this guy down. For sure, that is so pretty. I'm just, yeah, I mean, I didn't do anything special. I just stenciled the same way in both directions, and this is what we got. Sorry about that. Um, nope, and funny enough, I put it the other way, but again, it's the same. Oh, we, we can even go this way, huh? Let me play around with this a little bit and see which orientation I would like. Again, we can do both sets of flowers, one set of flowers, you know, one over the other one. I mean, there's whatever it is you want to do. Um, but let me play with this a little bit and with our sentiments, you know, depending on which one I want to use, and I'll be right back. Okay, so definitely these are both focal points. I mean, you can make two different cards with these. What I'm going to do is use both of them on this one card. So I think I like the way this looks. It's more of a landscape orientation. I'm going to put this guy... Just glue it right down, and then I'll take a look again to make sure it's where I wanted it to be, because this guy's going to be popped up a little bit here, and then the sentiment kind of tucked, no, not really tucked in, but just kind of peeking out in here somewhere, right? So, um, just going to bring that out a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to get some lower profile dimensionals on this one and some higher profile dimensional on this one, and I'll be right back. So we can see that pretty well. I mean, oh my gosh, so pretty. So put this guy kind of like in here. Again, higher, and then this one's just a little bit lower. And I'm just going to pop it like right in here. There 
maybe in here. Mm. Yeah, right in there is good. Okay. So again, just a little lower height than like this stuff by a smidgen. Wow. Thank you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you so much, LJS Creator, for sending these items for review. Again, two awesome focal points. Definitely make two cards pretty quickly. You have your different sentiments. And um, I happen to pop them both on the one card, the little extra. Um, look at the detail, though. I mean, that is just wow. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I have images coming up. I'll have the links in the description box. And I'll see you all at the next one. Bye now.